Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Squares of a Sorted Array. It's an easy. What is this question asking? Given an integer array num sorted in non-decreasing order, return an array of the squares of each number sorted in non-decreasing order. Example one, this is our input negative four, negative one, zero, three, and 10. And we want to output the squares in non-decreasing order. So we're gonna output zero, one, 9, 16, and then 100. This is going to be our output. Notice once we multiply two negative numbers, they become positive. Now, example two, this is our input nums, negative 7, negative 3, 2, 3, 11. What would this input look like if we were to square it? That would be 49, 9, 4, 9, and 1, 21. So if we were to then order this in non-decreasing order, it would be 4, 9, 9, 49, and then 121. So this is our output over here. We have some constraints over here and a follow-up. Squaring each element and sorting the new array is very trivial. Could you find an O of N solution using a different approach? Yes, we can, right? If you noticed in example two, we had the following input and our squares were the following. We know for a fact our input is sorted in non-decreasing order, meaning our biggest negative numbers are gonna be all the way to the left. We have negative seven, negative three, two, three, 11. And then our biggest positive numbers are gonna be to the right. But once we square these numbers, they're all gonna be positive. So the number with the greatest absolute value would be our bigger squares, which means our greatest squares are gonna lie on our two ends of our array. Knowing this, what we can do is just start on our two ends and move in for smaller numbers. Over here, right, in this example, we saw that our smallest number was in the middle, 4, then it was 9, 9, 49, and then 121. The smallest squares were in the middle and the biggest were on the ends. So in order to solve this, we know we want to start off on our two ends. So we're going to have two pointers, P1 and P2, at 0 and length of nums minus 1. So say this was our input example, negative four, negative three, zero, one, two, 10. What we're gonna do is start off at our two ends. So P1 is going to be at index zero and P2 is going to be at the very end over here. We know we want to return an output array. So I'm also gonna go ahead and initialize that. Output is going to be zero for the number of elements in our input. So zero times length of nums. So output is going to be the following. And since we are starting at our two ends, we know the biggest numbers are going to lie there. And so we want to traverse our output from the end to the beginning. So we're going to start off with index being length of nums minus one. So index is over here. Now, while index is greater than equal to zero, while we haven't filled in everything in our output, what we want to do is just compare. So if nums of P2, the absolute value of this, so if absolute value of nums of P2 is greater than absolute value of nums at P1, the absolute value of what we have in P2 is greater than the absolute value of what we have in P1, which in this case it is, right? 10 is greater than four. Then we know we want to fill what we have in our output at this index with what we have in P2 squared. So it's going to be output at index equaling nums of P2 times nums of P2. So this is gonna become 100. Then we wanna move P2 in. So P2 minus equals one. We're done with this number and we now want to go closer to the middle. So we move P2 in. And once this is done, we also wanna move index down. We have a new spot that we need to fill. So index minus equals one. We go back in this while loop. Index is still greater than equal to zero. We make a check. Absolute value of nums of two is not greater than the absolute value in nums of P1. Two is not greater than four. So we're gonna have a new condition else, in which case we're gonna do the exact opposite. So output at index is going to equal nums of P1 times nums of P1. So negative four times negative four is 16 and output at this index is going to get 16. Once this is done, we wanna move P1 up so it gets closer to the middle. So P1 plus equals one and we move index down again. So index is gonna move down over here. Going back in this while loop, index is still greater than or equal to zero. We make the same checks. Is absolute value of P2 greater than the absolute value of P1? That's not true, right? P1 is greater. So we go in this else, we're gonna add to our output at this index, negative three times negative three, which is nine, move P1 up and then move index down. Going back in this while loop, index is still greater than or equal to zero. So we make the same check, absolute value of nums of P2 is greater than the absolute value of nums at P1. Two is greater than zero. 
So we're going to add to our output nums p2 times nums p2. It's going to get four. We move p2 down and we also move index down. We're back in this while loop. The absolute value of nums of p2 is greater than the absolute value of nums at p1. So we're going to add to our output one times one, which is one. Move p2 down. So right now they both point to the same index and we're also going to move index down by one. So now index equals zero, and this is still true, right? Index is greater than equal to zero. We still have one more spot to fill. We're gonna make the check, absolute value of nums of P2 greater than nums of P1. This is not true. They're both at the same index, so they both have the same value. It's not greater, it's equal to. So we go in this else, and we're just gonna append the square of what we have in this index over here. So zero times zero is gonna be zero. So this is gonna stay zero, and we move P1 up by one, and we move index down by one. So now index is going to be negative one, which means we break out of this while loop. We can't go in here any further, which is good because our output is done. So all we need to do is just return our output. All right. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talk about space and time complexity. First space, we are making another output array. So you could say that this is O of N if we have N elements in our input. And for time, this is O of N because we are going through every single element in our input once. So if we have n elements, this is going to take O of n time. Now, we just did a complete walkthrough with an example, but if you have any questions, let me know down below. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.